you all know the proximal part of the small intestine is the duodenum. The total length of duodenum about 10 inches. It is having four parts. I will show you what are the parts and the individual length of the individual uh, part of the duodenum I will tell you. But before that you have to identify the proximal end and distal end before holding the duodenum in anatomical position. Proximal end means the end towards the pylorus and distal end means is the end towards the jejunum. So, I have to identify the two ends first, then anterior and posterior side, lateral side and medial side. If you see, uh, if you have a close look at this end, this is one end and this is another end, which is tight here, this is another end. You can see the interior to some extent of this end also and you can see the end of this side also. I am opening this side. Here the circular folds very closely situated and here to some extent they are widely separated from each other the folds and here this is thicker because it is close to the pylorus. It is thinner. If you feel it, it is thin but it is thick. So, in this way you can identify the proximal end or the pyloric end and distal end or jejunal end. Then it is having two borders. One border, this is the medial side and so medial border and this is the lateral border. And this border, it is concave, this border is convex. So, as a whole, the duodenum looks as a English alphabet C separate curve. C, you can see C. If I hold it, it is a C separate curve. Then two surfaces, anterior surface and posterior surface. The posterior surface it is non-peritoneal and anterior surface it is having peritoneal side but not everywhere. Then I am telling you which side is peritoneal and which one is non-peritoneal. Uh, to start with from the first part to fourth part. You see this is the first part I told you, first part or called the superior part, this one. This is the first part or superior part and it is horizontally placed more or less. So, it starts with the pylodulna junction up to the bending where it bends downwards. This bending is called superior duodenal flexor. And again this first part having two sub parts. First one inch is, is peritonealized on its all sides. But the second part it is peritonealized only on the anterior side not posterior side. So, if I consider the first part the length is about two inches. First one inch intraperitoneal and second one inch anteriorly peritoneal posteriorly non peritoneal. And here the important relation of the first part is here you will get the under surface of the liver. So, on the liver you will get the donal impression and also neck and body of the gallbladder. So, anteriorly you will get the body of the gallbladder, neck of the gallbladder and inferior surface of the right lobe of the liver. But posteriorly you will get one important artery. That artery is the gastrodurnal artery and also the portal vein and bile duct also you will get on the posterior surface of the first part of duodenum. So, if uh, you are asked what are the important posterior relation of the first part, your answer will be gastrodural artery, then common bile duct and the portal vein. The clinical importance is that if any ulceration occurs on the posterior wall of the first part of duodenum and if it perforates and erodes the gastrodural artery, there will be torrential hemorrhage. That is the importance of the relationship of first part with the gastrodural artery. But if the ulceration occurs on the anterior side and if it ruptures then as because it is peritonized, so the infection or the fluid will be circulated or the fluid will be channelized into the peritoneal cavity. This is the difference. Here hemorrhage, here the general infection or septicemia involving the whole abdomen. The importance of first part. Then come to the second part. Second part it starts with the superior duodenal flexor at the level of L1 vertebra and it extends downwards vertically up to the L3 vertebra. And here you will get another bend, bending. From this bending, it turns towards the 
left side as horizontal part. This bending is called inferior duodenal flexor. So, superior duodenal flexor, inferior duodenal flexor in between is the second part of duodenum or vertical part of the duodenum. Here in the middle and the anterior surface there is transverse colon. For the transverse colon this area is non-peritonized but upper side and lower side it is peritonized. But posterally is fully devoid of peritoneum, no peritoneum. So, posterior surface of the peritoneum on its all parts having no peritoneum. And in the concavity of this medial border of the second part is the head of the pancreas. And here also you will get analysis of two important arteries. That arteries are superior pancreatic duodenal artery, branch of gastrodunal and inferior pancreatic duodenal artery, branch of first part, first branch of superior mesenteric artery. Superior mesenteric artery where I will tell you. So, the two important vessels are there, superior pancreatic duodenal and inferior pancreatic duodenal. Besides this, on the medial wall, one important structures enter into the second part. And this structure opens inside the second part of duodenum. Here you see one elevation is there and all these are circular mucus folds or called plica circularis. Before demonstrating this one, just you look at this diagram on the blackboard. Suppose this is second part of duodenum. Just I am drawing only the second part. And this is the mucus lining or innermost lining. And then or outside this, you will get another layer called the submucus layer. Submucous layer and outside submucous this is the muscular layer which is thick. This is the muscular layer and outermost layer is the peritoneal coat or serous coat. Somewhere it is present, somewhere it is absent. And this is the medial side and this is lateral side. And here is the common bile duct coming downwards. Here is the fast part of duodenum. So, it is passing behind the fast part of duodenum, which is again formed by the cystic duct and the common hepatic duct. This is gallbladder. So, this is common bile duct. And you know, here is the pancreas. Here is the pancreas. So, within pa the pancreas, there is another duct is there. That duct is called the pancreatic duct or main pancreatic duct. So, this duct it enters into the second part of duodenum through the muscle of the duodenum, and this duct also it is passing through the medial wall or posteromedial wall separately into the muscle of the duodenum. Then, what happens here? This and this, these two duct they form a join together and form a dilatation here. And here the mucosa, innermost layer, this is the mucosa layer, innermost layer, sorry, innermost layer, it elevated this side. And this form elevation, the mucus, and here you will get an opening. So, when you see the interior of the duodenum, you will get this elevation. So, what is this elevation? It is the mucosal elevation. This is the mucous membrane. And at the at the whole elevation is called the papilla. So, this is the papilla called papilla. And the opening of the papilla and this dilated part here, this part is called the ampulla. Ampulla of water or also called hepatopancreatic duct, hepatopancreatic duct and form a dilatation after joining to each other is also encircled by a sphincter called sphincter of OD. So, you will see in the specimen this part only, you cannot see this part. That means, you can see the papilla which is the elevated mucosa and the opening 
at the apex of the papilla and this opening opening for this hepatopancreatic duct so i am showing you the mucosal elevation this is mucosal elevation this one so this is called the papilla and it is the major duodenal papilla major means it is larger or its height is more than the minor duodenal papilla i am telling you what is that and at the apex of this papilla there is an opening you closely see you can see the opening this opening is due to the opening of the hepatopancreatic duct so this is the ample of water opens in this opening and a mucosal fold semicircular fold or semilunar fold on each side and on the upper side of this papilla it looks like a monk's hood this one monk's hood appearance of the semilunar fold above this major papilla and some longitudinal fold may be there from the papilla downwards so inferior fold or there may be superior fold and about 2 cm above this major duodenal papilla there may be minor duodenal papilla but not as always visible but is there that opening is due to the opening of the accessory pancreatic duct which comes from the unsinate portion of the pancreas and the distance of the major papilla from the pilot duodenal junction is about from this up to 8 to 10 cm from the pilot again up to the major papilla 8 to 10 cm and minor papilla about 6 to 8 cm that means the distance from this papilla to papilla about 2 cm and all these circular folds and the length of this second part is about 3 inches then from the inferior duodenal flexor the third part starts the th third part is the longest part it is about 4 inches is length also called the horizontal part it is the superior part this is the vertical part this is horizontal part and fourth part will be the ascending part the smallest part it is about 1 inches in length so in the third part what is the important relation in the third part anterior you will get one vessels that will be the superior mesenteric vessels supramesenteric artery and supramesenteric vein vein right and artery left and supramesenteric artery gives of a branch first branch that is called inferior pancreatic duodenal artery i told you already so the, if this is the superior mesenteric artery and this branch this branch is the inferior pancreatic duodenal artery it's the first branch of superior mesenteric artery and behind this third part you will get two important vessel that two important vessel like this one is abdominal aorta one is inferior vena cava the vena cava is on the right side so two important vessel in front superior mesenteric artery and superior mesenteric vein two important vessel behind one the vena cava on the right side and aorta on the left side beside the two important structure there are so many structures are there and fourth part when it starts it ascends upwards from the third part so it is called the ascending part one is length it is thin and it is directed to some extent upwards and posteriorly so that the jejuna will be directed downwards and anteriorly like this so the jejuna is a fourth part of the duodenum and here at the junction of the duodenum and the jejuna you will get a ligament that ligament is called ligament of trich or substantial ligament which forms the duodenal jejunal flexor so this ligament of trich all or called substantial ligament of duodenum extending from the right cusp of diaphragm up to the duodenal jejunal flexor and this ligament forms this bending or from this flexor and the content of this ligament in the upper part in the skeletal muscle and lower part it is the by the smooth muscle and middle part it is encircled by the connective tissue where this tissue encircles the celiac artery so this ligament having three parts upper intermediate middle upper skeletal muscle middle connective tissue encircling the celiac artery and lower smooth muscle so ligament of trich here so finally i am holding the duodenum is anatomical position in my right hand here so this is facing towards the left side that mean here the pylorus sign so left side it is facing towards the left side where the jejunum starts and this lateral border 
towards the, my right side and concave border or left border towards my left side and here you will get the head of the pancreas. So, I am holding the duodenum in this way e to some extent upwards ascending. So, this is the anatomical position of duodenum. 